Okay, let's start. Uh, short introduction, we start on that side. That wasn't an introduction. Uh, my name is Ray Mohammerberg. Uh, I'm practicing attorney in the space of capital markets and financial services and doing also quite a bit of technology work. Uh, hi. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Maria. I'm coming from Crypto Exchange Exmo, the largest crypto exchange in Eastern Europe. I'm head of business development. Hi everyone, my name is Dmitry Agievich. I'm head of development uh, at currency.com, fully regulated tokenized securities exchange. Hi again, everybody. I'm Kevin Merkel. I'm CEO at CoinMetro, which is also an exchange, among other things. Also, uh, co founder of something called Ignium, which is the central securities depository built on a blockchain as I discussed just a bit ago. And I'm also the co-founder of the European Crypto Association, which is a lobbying group that goes around to regulators around the world and lobbies about crypto, about blockchain, its use cases, etc. We just set up uh, a regulatory sandbox in Montenegro, actually, as our most recent achievement. Richard Hart, a uh, YouTuber, Twitter, founded Hex.Win, uh, first blockchain CD, free for Bitcoin holders. Hi, my name is Bobby Lee. I'm the CEO and founder of Ballet. We make new uh, physical wallets for cryptocurrency. Some of you already came to get one. So I'm based out of Shanghai and Las Vegas. Thank you. Okay, so you have a very interesting panel. I know here because there are exchanges on the place. And also someone is familiar with the legal perspective. So when we talk about the future of crypto assets, so from a legal perspective, how do you see the future? Well, as far Do you as see any future for us to survive, or I think uh, Kevin um, Kevin did a nice introduction to the legal uh, legal part already, and and what I mean by that, there is clearly a future as a, as an asset class. You know, tokenization is not really token is not an asset class. Underlying asset is an asset class with its risks and features. Tokenization is just a form, and we have seen different form over the last you know what hundred years. Uh, there used to be paper certificates. At some point of time, they became dematerialized. Now they are decentralized. And furthermore, not only book entry anymore, but also of something more tangible or provable. So it's just the system and technology has improved. The laws are still the same. Because the laws are not regulating technology. They should not. Laws should always be regulating social relationships between the people. If you, I'm the seller, you are the buyer, we have a relationship, right? You have risks, I have risks. And those risks should be mini, mini, minimized and, uh, and transactions should be done with a minimal, minimal possible cost. So the laws are there. Laws just need to be tweaked. So from legal perspective, I think there is a great future for this new technology, and especially in the space of capital markets. Because what Kevin already explained as well, there is a lot of inefficiencies in the capital market space. And technology has a really good, um, good answer to this. But the reason why it's not currently working is not the problem of the technology, though it partly is just the kind of you know, limited throughput capacities, et cetera, et cetera, needed for the capital markets purposes. But in general, it's simply that people have started development from the wrong end, from the front end, because that's where the customers are, and intuitively, that's where the money is. But you cannot really, you know, effectively, what we are talking, if we're talking about water supply, you really need to have the piping in place to pump one kind of, you know, gallon water from one end of the country to the other end of the country. You need an infrastructure, and that's what we are missing here currently. Yeah, because you're talking about, uh, because you're talking about infrastructure, we have like here three exchanges sitting, and a former exchange owner. So, how do you see? Are you a major threat to the industry? Are you controlling the industry? Because exchanges play a vital role, and uh, also to like I think Kevin, I don't know, you only trade utility tokens. Am I correct? Uh, currently, yeah, currently yes. under our the, the way we are, but that will change relatively quickly with this uh, regulatory sandbox. Uh, okay. But uh, but yeah. And Exmo, how is it for you? You are trading at the moment only utility tokens, or only utility, right? Okay, and any plans to go further on, like currency.com? As soon as there is no regulation, we will not be trading. Uh, we will not, uh, 
any security tokens will not be traded at Exmo, that's for sure. So because for you it's like uh, too much of a risk for... Yeah, there's a lot issues. of risks. And uh, actually, um, I totally agree with the previous speaker, uh, as we see with Ton, uh, what is happening now. We are one of the we are investors of Ton Telegram. Yeah. And as soon as Bloomberg already revealed, I, I think I could speak that it could be delayed for 12 months uh, because of SEC. Yeah. And uh, that's important. I think uh, that was strategy, though. Yeah, that, that was strategy on Telegram side. That was not the strategy. <laughs> <laughs> I can explain the strategy yep. if anybody would like to know the uh, strategy from Telegram. <laughs> but I mean... Uh, <laughs> to pump uh, the price and get the secondary uh, We actually we have like five points from Pavel Dura, who was talking to all the investors. Sorry. Uh, and um, and the, the launch will be delayed, maybe it could be delayed for uh, more than 12 months. And uh, that's actually, ex that explains a lot that we are not ready for the professional market yet, as, as soon as we don't have any regulation right now. So. And, and Dimitri, like, like you run a, a security token exchange. Yes. So how do you deal with it? Because it's... Yeah, so we were actually uh, lucky that uh, in Belarus, uh, there is a support of government to create comprehensive like regulation for crypto and for blo blockchain related technologies and the important thing here and we, we actually like also FCA regulated company and uh, we uh, our partner has like uh, a European license in financial markets the problem here we see in, in Europe and other countries that the legal part they try to align uh, and squeeze crypto into existing uh, like traditional regulation which is like uh, the, the to uh, tokenization and crypto world is different which means that you obviously can borrow the good thing from the traditional like legal frameworks but you should be like uh, uh, brave enough to create it from scratch so uh, we were able uh, to see he, in Belarus this is the most like advanced regulation right now, uh, which regulates like also ICOs, uh, like uh, uh, mining, token offering, and so. So we are like pretty comfortable with this right now. And as I said, definitely when you uh, buy something on our exchange, you deal with the security first of all, and the token is just its representation. And the great benefit, and also like Raymo said, the, of it, uh, is that the ownership, and uh, Kevin mentioned about it, that the, the speed when you change it and change the ownership is like super fast. Okay, it's very interesting, so working. Now it should work. Yes, perfect. <laughs> Okay, the question is, so you mentioned Belarus, so are you regulated in Belarus? So what happens if I'm a German and starting to trade securities in Belarus? Is that doable? Is it not doable? Of course, of course. we are like open to 171 countries. We are not right now in, uh, we are not in, on, in those countries where, where regulation forces us to get national license. For example, USA and like certain states yes. of the US. But we are open for European like investors, from, from a, for Asian investors and so. Um, and uh, we are also open for the, for the crypto guys and for the, for the guys who have never been in crypto. But, but yeah. Does the security you're trading need to be issued in your home country? Or yes. can it be somewhere else like, you know, people most likely prefer to issue security like say under a European regulation? So then I cannot trade it on your exchange. Uh, so uh, the thing is that right now, uh, and this is uh, about like evolution of this space, is that the, if uh, the security is issued uh, uh, in our exchange, it follows the framework which is stated by the Belarus regulation. And actually it was uh, fully uh, consulted by like also the regulation uh, the guys have in Switzerland and Zug, it's like aligned, but yes, uh, there can be some, uh, let's say, integrational issues or so, but people who come and buy uh, tokenized security, they care about like investment and end result, 
rather than uh, whether they uh, want to issue or like uh, deposit token bought on our exchange, they can like deposit on other exchange. Okay. One question to Bobby. So you were running a very successful exchange from the early days and so the logic would be to not start a wallet to go <laughs> and start an exchange again. Because I think you have the connections, you know the industry. So, is there a reason why you're not doing it, or what is your take on security token exchanges? Yeah, I, I, I'm in a unique position for having built one of the very large early exchanges since 2011, and then after selling the company last year, I actually made a conscious decision to not go into another exchange. And the reason is uh, running an exchange is actually very difficult. For those of you, many of you who, who've never tried it, it's very difficult, uh, a lot of challenges with the regulation, because in, I don't care what part of the world, the regulation is always you know, two steps behind where it should be. So it's, it's tough working with regulators. It's also, it's also difficult from a you know, compliance perspective, from a KYC. You basically There's don't want fraud. to... There's a lot of fraud out there trying to you know, hackers, not just hackers, but people, fraudsters trying to steal people's accounts, get bitcoins, and then of course there's a hacking risk and all that stuff. So, uh, you know, having sold the exchange, I'm happy to have wound down the, ex the business properly and responsibly. Um, so my, my, my new business, I purposely chose to do a decentralized wallet where we allow the users to keep the private keys. Uh, I no longer want to be in the custody business. I was in the custody business for over five years. Uh, it sounded fun and interesting at first, but I don't know who's in the custody business, but I um, I know envy to be in your shoes. How is it yeah. with you, Richard? Like you're silent. <laughs> I I'm just. That's pretty I sure you I have your own opinion about this. I, I don't think digital tech. I do not think digital ledger technology is worth crap at all. So it, it's this simple. <clears throat> if you do not require censorship resistance, you will not benefit from the blockchain. It is very expensive, it is very slow, it loses data and doesn't tell you about it. Oh, which side of the fork is the real one? Oh, I don't know where my data went. Oh, I didn't pay enough for transaction, my data didn't get written at all. Oh, my transaction type is no longer valid on the network. So, so your assumption is like this, assuming like, like Facebook. There are millions of users who have profiles and no one cares about it, that they are basically the product. People want to make money. If someone starts a DLT company, it's because they want to bill people hours to make a DLT product. Amazon does 50% of commerce on the internet in the United States with no blockchain. You want to do commerce, you want to do amazing things, you can do them with free open source software now, which is the same free open source software that Bitcoin used to build itself. Bitcoin didn't write its own database. It used the Berkeley DB and it uses Level DB now, and those are free open source databases that actually store all of the blockchain data for Bitcoin. And you can use those same databases to build any data structure you want. A blockchain is just a way to store data. The only interesting and unique thing that a blockchain does in Bitcoin is it lets people join the network whether other people want to stop them or not. If a government doesn't like you and they want to stop you from getting Bitcoin, you can go mine your own Bitcoin and they can't stop you, right? So That's basically you're thinking sheep doesn't want to be... Look, we used to have bear shares in the United States. When you, when you watch Die Hard on Christmas, there was a big robbery where he wanted the bearer bonds, but we don't have those anymore. Why? Because the government turned them off. We used to have bear shares in many, many, many countries, and we don't have them anymore. Why? Because the government turned them off. Because the government is tired of people coming to them and saying, hey, government, I just got robbed of all my shares. Can you please fix this for me? And the government being able to say, no, we can't. The government but wants to be able to solve problems. For example, you're saying problems. got robbed shares. Imagine, like, we, you, you own your shares, it's tokenized, you, you, and the government cannot take it away. I know at the moment it's like the regulatory right. allows it to be reissued, and I'm very similar but thinking like so in Delaware they passed a law that allows digital ledger technology to exist you can tr you can keep a record of who owns what shares using a blockchain in Delaware but there's a gotcha the gotcha is that any transfers of shares on the chain are 100% irrelevant and meaningless and do not matter and all they've done is duct tape a blockchain to what they actually care about the actual record that matters the authoritative record which is the transfer agent that is the only person legally allowed to transfer those. Yeah, things. but so basically it means we need to change law to make this happen. Until everyone starts losing their keys 
and then begs you to fix it for them and you can't and then you go hey actually grandma just got robbed you know it's it, there's no, no, I know what you mean. To, it's basically to custody he doesn't want to be a custodian yeah. of your money because it's hard it, you will get robbed right so you know there's a limit to how expensive the rolex you wear in public is because you lose your arm right and we chop off your arm uh, Maria, from you, from an exchange perspective, so what did you guys make to go into the exchange business? Because he was mentioning everyone is just building exchanges to make money, so is there some belief in the blockchain or was it just like, okay, let's make an exchange? Uh, yeah, that's actually partly true and uh, I fully agree that uh, people want to make money, that's for sure. Uh, from exchange perspective, I could say that uh, it's harder than it used to be. We are like six years in the market already. We were one of the first on the market we established like six years ago. Uh, we are London regulated, we are regulated by FCA also. Um, but um, I'm not sure actually, I, I heard a lot of interesting things about Belarus, but I didn't hear, hear of any project that was set up there. Maybe that's like of <laughs> my... Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, the hardest thing right now is uh, probably following all of the IML procedures because, you know, guys, we have like five uh, fifths IML uh, uh, direction that is uh, going to be in January fully, uh, fu fully in progress. Uh, so we are, we are prepared. Uh, we uh, conduct the contract with uh, Cypher Trace. So right now we are following all the transactions and we are monitoring uh, all the bad transactions. So actually we could see through the system uh, where Bitcoin is going. So actually the Bitcoin is not so like anonymous anymore because you could actually follow all the wallets, for example, uh, where the money goes. So, uh, and uh, Cypher Trace uh, mark all these transactions like with uh, one to 10 uh, uh, high risk. So any, uh, you could see actually that, for example, Binance has like six, uh, six mark there. So it's like somewhere in the middle of high risk. Some exchanges are crazy high risk. So uh, all their bad transactions go through these exchanges. Uh, so that's probably the hardest thing right now because if you want to follow the rules you need to be like as crazy uh, as traditional as you could be so that's probably the biggest challenge for us right now Kevin for you it's like you mentioned you are in the transition to get into the more regulated business so why this decision and why not stay where you are uh, I'm probably a psychopath uh, like every uh, business owner that tries to turn a profit um, but no I look I come from traditional finance I don't see it as hard I think most of the things we need to do are quite common sense. Uh, you know, you need to make sure dirty money doesn't come in. Not that difficult. Bitcoin isn't anonymous, it's pseudo-anonymous. It's never been anonymous. Those transactions are public, just like almost every other blockchain, aside from maybe privacy tokens. AMLD5, AMLD4, AMLD6 when it comes out, and MIFID2, MIFID3, MIFID5, MIFID20 uh, when it comes out in 400 years from now. Uh, all these things aren't that difficult to follow. The problem is, is that crypto start, the, the, you have, there's different ways to look at this, this industry. Uh, and I'll try to get back on the tokenization path here in a second, but uh, when, you, when you look at the, how Bitcoin started, I went to my first Bitcoin conference, I think, back in like 2013, and everybody had a man bun and tattoos. I was the only bald white guy, bald white guy over the age of, you know, 35, 36 in the room, uh, and everybody was talking about how they, you know, basically put the middle finger up to the banks and how, you know, the world needed to change. And now, when you come to conferences, there's a lot more bald white guys over the age of 40 uh, in the room. Uh, and so, what happened was is Bitcoin started out as this idea to basically change the world, change nothing. And now we're in a point where it's becoming a, to a tool in the tool belt of traditional finance. So in 20 years from now, when my kids are, you know, in their 30s or 40s, some of them, uh, they're going to come to me and traditional finance is going to be, you know what, crypto. They're not going to call it crypto, though, right? They're going to call an ETF an ETF and a, man a, man a managed fund a managed fund and the dollar is going to be on the blockchain, but you know what? It's not going to be called a cryptocurrency. It's going to be called the U.S. dollar, and so will the euro. I think people look at this and they give way too much credence uh, to how this, to how the movement started. I've seen many of these things happen. Anybody know what e-gold is? Yeah, yeah I know Richard would know what e-gold was. Uh, you know, e-gold was great, right? You talk about Bitcoin. It wasn't decentralized, but when you talk about the ability to move money uh, and the ability to move money cross-border, that was asset-backed. This, uh, it was a doctor in Florida that invented this back in the late 90s. It was great. That guy uh, eventually got arrested by the FBI and put in jail. 
So obviously Bitcoin has made a bit of a leaps and bounds uh, in terms of decentralization, but back to tokenization, just to touch on this point. So anything could be tokenized and everything will be tokenized in some extent. We've been using tokens for 30 years, guys. You talk about whether you're talking about gaming, whether you're talking about an API call, the original API calls that sent data from one database to another used a token to send that data. Yeah, they didn't do it on a blockchain or whatever. That's meaningless. But we've been tokenizing things forever. Things will be tokenized. Facebook Libra, not going to happen as they want because it's like a sovereign central bank that can control monetary policy. That's never going to happen. But they will create a token. So will Apple, even though they say they won't. They said they wouldn't create a phone. Well, they did. Uh, so they will tokenize. So will Google. So will Amazon. So will Microsoft. It allows them to move money internally for free. It allows them to monetize pieces of their ecosystem they can't monetize. All these things will need a place to trade because I want to be able to go and take my Prisma tokens and trade them for Rimi tokens because I got a deal on tomatoes or whatever, right? I'm going to need a place to do that. So the exchange business for me is not about Bitcoin. It's not about Ethereum. It's not about what, what is the true Bitcoin and all these other theoretical nonsense arguments that happen in this industry. It's about the fact that modern finance will be tokenized and there will be gatekeepers just like there are in traditional finance. Banks are gatekeepers into traditional finance. Exchanges will always be one of the major gatekeepers into this new traditional finance. So that's why I'm here. I can, I can, so we already have tokenization. That's what airline miles are, yeah. right? It's a, it's a reward program. It works very well. It's not trustless. There was a guy that used to have unlimited flights. He, he bought a deal. He could fly anywhere he wanted. And then he started letting his friends use it, and then he lost it, right? It's not trust. Because he didn't play along the rules. Yeah, he, tried, he, <laughs> he was registering game. fake names for a second. Yeah, he was registering a suitcase as a, yeah. So we know the story. The, the, the issue is, even a company that does its best possible job to publish accurate price data will get it wrong. The New York Stock Exchange published publicly incorrect price data for stocks. So I don't care what blockchain you run, I don't care if you have the best oracle in the world, you are going to have to roll back the chain because you got bad data because the real world is hard. Someone has to measure the real world analog and digitize it into a blockchain. They will screw up and life is hard and you have, to be able to, you have to be able to roll back transactions. If you can roll back transactions, what you really have is a trusted party that can print as much free money as he wants. And if you trust that guy to not cheat and not lie to the blockchain, then you can trust him to just do it all on PHP and MySQL without the stupid, slow, expensive blockchain. So blockchains work in the digital realm. As soon as they touch the analog world, the guy that tells the blockchain what's going on in the real world lies or screws up or has a gun put to his head. And, and that's, so his business can work and it can work amazingly well because people do need to transfer value between things, but it doesn't need a blockchain to do it. And I would almost guarantee that his internal infrastructure is blockchain free. Of course it is. Yeah, because it's faster and cheaper. And if there's a screw up, you can fix it. <laughs> do, do you not think, because you say it's faster and cheaper, so people are, technology is advancing. So he's saying at the moment it makes sense to build it centralized. Yeah. Do you not believe means expensive. That's, that's literally why what do you think so? I mean, it's, we, we know like it's evolution and decentralized doesn't I mean, need to be expensive. was very expensive at some point as well, right? So I, I, I think we, we have an exponential move. Technology always moves exponentially. So it took us, I think somebody had a slide up here. Uh, I think it was, yeah, I think it was you actually. That started, you know, 2005 to 2020 to go in this like dematerialized fashion and then maybe till 20 to 2035. I, I can tell you one story. So I was involved in the mobile phone industry like years back. Yeah. And when you were talking with them about streaming HD over the network, they were saying it will never happen. <laughs> like, yeah, it will never happen. Yeah, yeah. I mean. So, so I, I, I think the idea is decentralization is a great idea. Just like Marxism and communism on paper sound an awesome. Uh, but in, in practice, they don't work, right? Uh, neither does democracy, to be quite honest. But that's a whole other panel that I'm not on, so I'm not going to go into that. Um, but so the, the idea here is that, you know, if you, it's like if you say that the technology, the technology doesn't work that well today for many things that people want to apply it to. That's for sure. But database tech didn't work really well for shit they wanted to apply it to 25 years ago either. Neither did the internet, neither, neither did the protocol that even started the internet, neither did the... So we have an exponential race. I was in cell phones as well. I sold some of the first cell phones ever. That's how I made my first little bit of money when I was younger. Uh, you know, MTAC, Motorola, this thing that weighed like 19 kilos. You had to carry it around. The battery would like burn your hand. But if you were in a tunnel underneath the, like the crust of the earth, it still worked, right? Uh, but, but so, you know, I, but you can see how fast from that to an iPhone, the, the, the time it took. Now, for, to get from, you know, yelling across the woods to a phone took a long time. 
To get from the phone to the mobile phone took a lot less time. To get from the mobile phone to the smartphone, much less time. So I think it depends on the brain power that we put behind this. And right now you see a lot of smart people trying to tackle these issues. The question is, will those smart people continue to try and tackle these issues, or will they give up at some point, move on to the next great thing, which might be called like, I don't know, flockchain or something. I don't know, right? Uh, Remo, how is it like, <laughs> because we talk here about, okay, the law doesn't change. And for me, I think like, like one thing is, is, is change or industry changes is like legal needs to follow. Is legal at the moment too slow to follow the current pace of technology? Yeah, that's, uh, that's always a good question. And in that case, I always like to ask a question from the room. It's um, who thinks that the laws are too much behind of the development of the technology and therefore stays on the way of the progress? Raise the hand. Oh, okay, quite, uh, quite few. <laughs> so can anybody tell me one specific thing what the laws are missing? I mean, you have a wish list and imagine I am the parliamentarian and I take your wish to the parliament. So kind of in simple layman's term, one thing that you would like to change in the laws, that um, the business would be better. Can I mention something? Of course, you can do too. Yeah, money laundering. You Define, can, uh, you, I, want, I want a law that clearly defines what is money laundering and why that should be illegal. Okay, that's a very good thing. I'd clearly like to, defining it's, uh, okay. You'd I'd like clearly to, defined illegal doesn't really, that's kind of an no, no, so the define, basically define. My point is to define what is money laundering and give the rationale for why that should not be allowed. So if I give you 100 euros and you give me five twenty dollar euros, I think broadly speaking that's money laundering. Uh, it's, it's not. No. Actually, money laundering regulations, now it will be the 30 second crash course into a money laundering law. So money laundering regulations, AML regulations, effectively tackle two things. A, identify who is the person involved. Identity, that is know your customer. Effectively checking who the person is. Nothing to do with the money laundering yet. From the, and then when you know who the people are, then you can start spotting suspicious transactions. Obligation to know your customer has nothing to do actually so far with the uh, you know, suspicious transactions. But what but is suspicious? Suspicious is you know, when it looks suspicious to a so reasonable it's very person. Well, it looks it's very subjective. Is it very subjective? Example, uh, always, they, always. And well, those are everything is suspicious. Because, See, but I, I, imagine. I'm not, I'm not a big fan of laws that are, sus that are subjective to your point of view. It's, it's kind of, it's not my point of view, but imagine for a second if the suspicious transaction was clearly defined. And now imagine well, 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 the, 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 the criminal minds are not the stupid people, it's, the most it's stupid like people in the world. Go, it's like saying we should go basically put handcuffs on all the bad people. Well, who's the bad people? Well, whoever I think is bad people, then we should you know, lock no, them up. No, it's nothing to do with the bad or good. Well, it's actually... Are. But what's suspicious? If, it, suspicious is, you know, what looks on um, kind of a unregular for example, and on without the reason. Regular. It's kind of a... They, 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 they can, That's my point. My point is the law is not clear on this topic. Uh, they cannot they, be clear. But, would, would better, and they would never better cannot, better cannot be clear. They cannot be clear because the lawmakers want the power to prosecute whoever is select, selective prosecution. But let me, let me just tell you one thing. Mm -hmm. Imagine there was a clear list of things which are deemed as a suspicious transactions and therefore which could be considered as a money laundering or forbidden transactions. How likely it is that the lawmakers would get a definitive list in place? How likely it is that it's because everything what is not in a list is therefore permitted? And money laundering and you know, laundering uh, criminal money would therefore be allowed if you can the, make it outside so the list. The, the country I'm from and the, country that, the countries that I want to live in and be a citizen of should have the laws well defined. They, there will be no countries. I, I, have, a, I have a great idea. I, like that. I have a fabulous <laughs> idea. No, no, so no, I, nobody I believe will be in not a in country this, uh, where the not government in, is for the people, by the people. Not on the planet the, Earth. I, oh, I wow. I, wow. that, that is both statement. Are you saying that you want countries to have authoritarian governments that are not elected by the people, but where I, it's not really the people's choice, but the government's choice? I can, uh, I can respond to you. I can respond to you. I tell, actually, it comes back to the same thing what we what discovered like? before, uh, discussed before regarding financial institutions. It's a question of governance. 
and the question what of trust. What is the role of government? Now, is it for the people? Is it for me, you? Yeah. I remind everybody that it's the I can, future I can of get you guys to agree on something. If yeah, it's, well, it's a very interesting conversation no, to Nobody be likes crime, right? Everyone wants crime to stop. I don't want my so, daughter getting sold drugs in the second grade, right? So if somebody can stop that guy's Bitcoin from hitting his, you know, cocaine account, I'm, I'm cool so, with that. Right. Here, so here's put that we, on the list. Here's what we want. We want, we want, we want a better world. We think that law enforcement and laws makes a better world. And you have to decide where you're going to put your limited law enforcement funds. And you have two options. You can put your money into investigators and prosecutors that actually catch people doing bad stuff and actually imprison them. Or you can put it into fantasy law enforcement, <laughs> which is one layer removed from crime. So here's crime, here's stuff that's bad that we don't want, and then here's virtual meta crime, which is the, which is the proceeds of, the of, of that money, crime. Right? Exactly. Yeah. See, I, so if you, you do less of the meta crap and less of the bothering everybody, it's hard for everyone to open a bank account now because 0.01% of you might be bad. It's hard for all of you to get on an airplane. I agree on that. Because 0.01% <laughs> of you might be bad. Well, you know what? If you look at the cost to the world in GDP loss of time of creating a new branch of government called the TSA and taking a bunch of $10 an hour guys to molest all the kids that are going through to get on their planes to maybe not uh, you know, blow a few planes up, it turns out that it's all security theater anyway. Okay. And that any time they ever test it, every explosive that ever Future wants to get through assets. gets <laughs> through, right? So you've got virtual law enforcement and virtual security with the TSA and the BSA and the mm -hmm. SARS reports, the vast majority of which are never looked at. And you're trying to get people to do better law enforcement by picking a needle out of a haystack and adding more needles and adding more hay. Well, they, don't, they need better tools and more investigators and more funding to work with the data they've got. They don't need to drown in more shitty data, which costs all the innocent people, where the vast majority of people. The TSA doesn't that make is, a, uh, That was a lot of stuff. Let me just uh, respond I, quickly. I both. Need... We can have both. We can have better law yeah. enforcement by drowning meta law enforcement with all the bullshit reporting that no one ever uses and taking that money and giving it to actual investigators that do the groundwork and file indictments and get emergency injunctions and do actual real work. And crime, that's thousands of crime. people. Yeah. I, I think we need to wrap crime, it up. <laughs> stop then, fighting you know, meta crime. Put all the money on the yeah. blockchain. Because everyone here is guilty of meta crime by trying to open a new account somewhere, right? It's because, horrible. No, the opening account is a popular topic because everybody says now, because of the AML regulation and fighting against the money laundering, now nobody can open a bank account. It's nothing to do, actually. It's, we have to look a bit deeper. For example, a specific problem of inability to open a bank account, and there is a problem of inability to open a bank account. Hence, people cannot get access to the banking and financial system. And this is important, actually. I would say it's part of the human rights, even. I have to be able to consume financial services. Disappearing so, ATMs yeah, is a human exactly. rights issue. Now, the underbanked where, where the poor is the problem, actually? The problem is that a banks or market participants are entitled with a payment, payment services, and acting like gatekeepers for the payment system by opening a bank account, it is simply, those are the wrong participants. Banks make their money in making interest returns, right? Yes. From the credit uh, interest rate spread. They make money, they can make a massive amount of money. But now, opening one account wrong, if you get it wrong, this license will be taken away. And we but, have seen that happening. People are losing, people are losing hundreds Guys, of millions. Guys, I think we need to stop the conversation. So, so, so my point is simple. Wrong Remo, people, please finish and then we stop yeah, it and I wrap yeah. it up. It's, it's, it's wrong people are doing wrong things, but it's so, it's nothing wrong with the regulation, what I claim. It is simply wrong Wait. people designated with the wrong task. You, you can't, you can't, with money laundering, unless you define clearly what's right and wrong, it's, it's really bad when, when it, it's up to you to define, or the bankers or the regulars say, oh, that's, that's bad behavior. Legislators, no. the regulators it has, don't define it, it has to be law. It has to be concrete law that's readable with common understanding. I, I think that the, the life is never always 100% clear, and like it's in this case as well. And to wrap it up, I think if you talk about the future of crypto assets and tokenization, uh, it was more like in a direction which most of the panels are ending. Let's tokenize the TSA and we can all yes, sort it. Yes, exactly. But what the good thing is, as long as there are revelation and people have controversy, things are getting moved forward. So there is a future for crypto assets and tokenization. And now everyone is happy to have some lunch, I'm assuming. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Questions about the TSA, socialism, Marxism? <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>